My first show in Melbourne was at a coffee shop and these guys might have been having like a, a staff party of some sort and because I was booking my shows via like social media saying, hey, will anyone host me in these locations? And it worked out perfect. Really lovely crew who ran the coffee shop. And so I played this little gig to like 40 people and I go park the van around the back, sleep there. Um, Jessica and I were traveling everywhere at that point. Just for some clarity, Jessica was my 1992 commuter highest 2.4 liters unleaded dream machine. I just thought that was the most coolest thing that I had a car and a place to sleep because it's what made possible to afford to drive all the way to Melbourne doing these little shows. I could be there in two days. Just two days, a bit of petrol, a lot of coffee. The next day I've parked my van around the front of the shop and I check them, check the signs, make sure we find a park here and go inside, take my coffee. And someone in the cafe might have been a waitress or just another person looking out the window was like, oh, like your car, I'm like, I quick get out there because the, the ticket office is there, like they might tow it. And I was like, I read, read the sign. So I run out and I was like, hey, hey, like that's my, that's my van. He's like, you're parked in a clearway. And I was like, what is a clearway? He's like, it's for the trams. I was like, but it says here that the times you can park here to here. And he just looked at me like, just take your van and go. Didn't find me, hopped in my van. And that was my introduction to trams and parking in Melbourne. So my first backyard show, um, I'd organized with somebody, a local Ravi. That was a hundred people, which was for my first time of my own show in Melbourne. And even compared to any other shows I was doing in any cities or any areas, it was a lot, you know, especially putting a hundred people in the backyard isn't an easy feat. And, we were doing it outside. Like we didn't have rain friendly options and this one didn't have. If it was gonna rain, like we couldn't do the show. So it was a pretty like, I hope this works kind of, kind of moment. And uh, I remember it being freezing. It was like three or four degrees or something. And you're trying to play on steel strings and everyone, thankfully who's used to the cold in Melbourne, was all rugged up and smart about it. Um, I think I was quite caught off guard. I don't think in Melbourne we, Melbourne or surrounds, we so much as had any backyard show that ever ran. And don't ask how that's possible. Like it's really, that's really something. And you just don't, I don't ask, just thankful for it. And it worked out that way. Yeah, Sydney My Music Bowl is an outside venue. And so I'm just going to give my little thanks in the days leading up to that. And just know that it's gonna be fine. You can't replicate those moments. You can't try and make them it just happen. And it was like, I was making my own reality every single month and traveling Australia and traveling through Victoria, for example, for the first time and going surfing and meeting all these new people. Like there's just, it's a really special moment in time. Cause even if it was all the exact same things laid out, all the exact same scenarios, I don't know if it would happen again. Like I remember going from playing these, these backyards and houses to then maybe playing a couple little a couple of small venues in the city, I forgot that call, but doing a couple nights at like a 250 person venue. Then maybe coming back and doing two corner hotels, which was nuts, still is nuts, was nuts. And then I played 170 Russell Street three times, which again, even now is crazy. And I think it was backstage at the Palais Theatre, which is the biggest theatre theatre in Australia. Someone said to me, I feel like Melbourne's this like diving board for you. Like, you, whenever you come back to Melbourne, it's like you're on this new height and you have to dive from like the highest point you ever dive from it. So that's what Melbourne, I think, as a city is to me. It's like the best way to describe it. Every time I come back, I go to walk onto like the highest part of this diving board and just take a deep breath and, and hope for the best. And I think the Melbourne people really feel that. And then now to be playing Sydney Maya music, oh, that's the place that you go, one, one day I'll play. One day I'll play that venue, maybe. It's not like something you set out to realistically do, particularly as a solo singer-songwriter.